Shades of Morton is a fairly easy and chill minigame once you get the hang of it. This minigame gives some unique rewards, some of which are especially useful to Iron Men. There are other Shades of Morton guides out there, but the up-to-date ones don't really explain how to effectively complete this on an Iron Man, so I'll be filling that void. Here is an Iron Man friendly guide to Shades of Morton. I'll talk more about the rewards and why you should do the minigame later, let's get into the requirements. The only real requirement is completing the Shades of Morton quest, but it's also highly recommended to have at least 81 combat so you aren't aggroed by the lore shades constantly, and the Mauritania Hard Diary could help a lot with teleporting and banking. The quickest way to get to Morton is using the Shades of Morton minigame teleport, but this only works every 20 minutes, just use it when you can. The second best teleport is the Morton Teleport Scroll if you have those from Clues or if you're a main and want to buy some. The Barrows Teleport and Mauritania Legs Teleport are about the same distance, but the Berg Teleport is close to a bank. Another option is to use a fairy ring with the code BKR and run southeast to the Swamp Bodhi. But be aware, if you have food while running through the swamp, you may lose some to ghasts. The Shades of Morton minigame world is 377. You only need to be in this world for the temple part of the minigame, not the catacombs. You can solo, but it's much easier to do it in a group, so I really recommend using world 377. Also, if you hop worlds, your sanctity will reset to zero. First of all, you want to make sure you've used a Serum 208 on Razmir to access his shop. If you've used a Serum 208 on him before and he appears afflicted, talk to him and he'll return to normal without you having to use another Serum on him. If you don't know how to make a Serum 208, I'll explain it later on. The first part of this minigame is helping the temple and getting your sanctity up so you can create sacred oil. If you're not an Iron Man, you can skip this part and buy Pyre Logs off the GE. If you have good combat stats and gear, you can kill shades around the temple to bring up your sanctity. Your sanctity slowly decreases over time, so this only works if you can kill shades quickly. Use a salve amulet and whatever your best melee gear is. If you're a lower level or there's too many people killing shades at the time, your best option is to repair the temple instead. Repairing the temple is pretty chill, so it's really not a bad option. You do have to click on the wall to start repairing again once in a while though. In this case, you don't need to worry about wearing gear unless you're under 81 combat and will be attacked by shades. In your inventory, you will need a tinderbox in case you need to light the fire, no matter which method you're doing. If you're repairing the temple, you'll also need a hammer. Flamtear Hammer is highly recommended as it gives you an invisible plus 40 crafting boost in this minigame and makes repairing much faster. You can buy it from the general store or on the GE for less GP. For building, you need one timber beam, one limestone brick, and 5 swamp paste to increase the resources. Your resource pool is individual and not affected by other people, but once you've filled it up to 100%, it gets used up very slowly, and you'll most often be repairing the temple without having to have supplies in your inventory. You don't need to worry about any of these supplies if you're just defending the temple though. And the rest of your inventory for either method will be olive oil, which you can buy from the general store. You can buy the packs in bulk or just buy an inventory whenever you get back from banking, whichever is easiest for you. You need at least 10% sanctity to sanctify the oil, and this uses up 3.6% sanctity per oil. With 24 olive oils in my inventory, I used up 83% sanctity. So to be on the safe side, you could get 100% or nearly 100% sanctity before doing your whole inventory of olive oil. The flammed hair bag is also nice 
for temple repairs once you get it from the catacombs part. It holds up to 60 timber beams and limestone bricks, and 500 swamp paste. The flam tear bracelet is an enchanted jade bracelet that holds 80 charges and makes building a lot more effective. If you want to solo, the bracelet makes this a lot more feasible. Soloing is much harder because once you start building, all of the nearby shades start attacking the temple and it's very hard to out DPS them. But if you really want to solo for some reason, use bracelets and the flame tear hammer. To make serum 208, you have to get your sanctity to 20% and sanctify a serum 207, which you can make from a vial of water, a clean teramin, and ashes. You usually do this during or right after the quest, so you probably don't have to worry about curing Rasmir at this point. Another tip is if you use Runelight, I recommend using the Entity Hider when sanctifying your oil so you don't accidentally use your oil on another player or monster. Once you've made your sacred oil, the next step is making pyre logs and cremating shade remains. You might want to collect some lore remains while defending the temple so you don't have to collect them later on. Different logs correspond to different shade remains and require different amounts of sacred oil. First is normal logs and oak logs, which use two doses of oil each. You can use higher tier logs for lower level shades, but it's not recommended because they use more oil. Once you have your pyre logs, which is probably easier to make in bulk, you take them with shade remains to these funeral pyres. There are several spots around Morton where you can cremate shade remains, it doesn't matter which which one you use, just whatever is closest or available. First, use the pyre logs on the funeral pyre, then the shade remains, then click to light it and you'll get your reward. Usually your reward is a key, but sometimes you'll get coins instead. Floor remains give you bronze keys, which are the first step to getting into the catacombs. The entrance to the catacombs is to the north. You need any key to get in, it doesn't matter which tier. In the first area here are friend shades, which you can kill to get their remains for the next door. If you want to use up your bronze keys, there are two rooms to the east and west with different chests. Each key you obtain has a different color that corresponds to different chests. If you look closely, you can usually tell what color the chests are, but if it's too difficult, you can also examine them. Going through doors doesn't consume keys, but does require them. The only thing that uses up keys is opening chests, so you'll need a lot of keys to get the locks in the lower tiers. But I'll talk more about rewards later. For friend shades, you can use normal pyre logs again. From these, you can get steel or bronze keys. The higher tier key is more common, but most shades do have a chance of dropping the next lower tier key as well. With the steel keys, you can then enter this larger area of the catacombs with multiple steel doors leading to chests. Here you can kill Ryle shades for the next tier of keys. Ryle remains require willow logs or higher. To make willow pyre logs, you use three doses of oil. Burning Ryle remains gives you black keys and steel keys. The next area is to the southwest with these blue shades. There are multiple chest rooms and here you can kill Asin shades. Asin remains require U logs or higher, which use all four doses of your sacred oil each. These give silver and black keys.
The next area is to the west of the Steel Room. Here there are Fear Shades, which are a bit higher level and I find myself sometimes needing food when fighting these. Here there are three different chest rooms. Fear Remains give both silver and gold keys, so they're better to collect than Acid Remains if you're completely done with the Black Tier, so you won't get lower level keys from them anymore. If you're going for the Zealot Robes, you will need a lot of gold keys, so it's better to use Fear Remains to get a mix of gold and silver. And lastly, once you've obtained a gold key, you can enter this area to the southeast. Purium shades are the highest level shades, only dropping gold keys. These are fairly high level, so I would bring food or pray against them when you're grinding them out. All of the gold chests are in this one room, which is safe from the shades. This is where you'll spend the most time if you're going for the zealot robes, or all of your time if you're not interested in the lower tier locks at all. I recommend keeping at least one key in your bank of the highest tier you have collected. This is just in case you accidentally use up your last key on the chest, just to save you some time. Once you're done with the lower tier though, you can drop all of your keys. When opening chests, you will sometimes spawn undead zealots. You can ignore them and continue opening chests or you can kill them for their only drop which is bleached bones. These can be used on the altar in the southern part of the steel room to restore your prayer to full. Once you've obtained any lock, you can talk to Dompei outside of the catacombs entrance for a broken coffin. You can get the broken coffin before having locks, but it's useless without locks. Each tier of locks comes from their corresponding metal chest and is about a 1 out of 60 drop. Using a ring of wealth slightly increases their drop rate. You can then talk to Dompe and ask him to attach the lock to your coffin to make it usable. The bronze coffin holds up to 3 shade remains of any type. Steel holds up to 8, black holds up to 14, silver holds 20, and gold holds up to 28. I recommend using the coffin when you get it because it makes collecting shade remains less tedious. You can right click and select open to have the coffin automatically fill with shade remains when you pick them up. You can also select configure to check how many remains you have inside, or empty the coffin, or remove the lock. Some other items you can get from this minigame are fine cloth from steel or above. This is used to make split bark armor. The flam tear bag from steel or above, this holds supplies used to build the temple. You can only own one flam tear bag at a time so you won't get dupes. The Amulet of the Damned from Silver and Gold Chests. This has the same stats as a glory, but most notably, it provides an extra buff to Barrow's equipment. It will degrade at the same rate as Barrow's armor, but once it fully degrades, it turns to dust. There are two journals you can obtain from Steel Chests or above. Reading these for the first time gives you a scroll, which you can read to unlock the ability to make Swamp Bark and Blood Bark armor. Once you've obtained these books, you will receive the scrolls as dupes from searching chests, but these are useless after you've already read one. And the zealot's outfit is only obtained from gold chests. Each piece is 1 out of 128. This provides a decent amount of prayer bonus, and each piece has a 1.25% chance to prevent materials from being consumed while training prayer. With the full set, it stacks to a total of 5%. This works with bones on altars, and sold heads, and bone meal and buckets of slime. It even stacks with the Wilderness Chaos Altar's bone saving effect. The only things it doesn't work with are the Forthos Dungeon's Sacred Bone Burner and the Sinister Offering spell. So if you don't care about lower tier locks for the collection log or fashion, I would skip to the gold keys as fast as possible and grind those out. You will most likely get all of these other items from the gold chest before you finish the full zealot's outfit. If you're curious, to meet the drop rate, you will need about 60 logs for each tier of luck.
I would start out with less in case you get lucky. To reach the drop rate for the entire zealot's outfit would be 512 gold keys. And you have to keep in mind that most shade remains also drop lower tier keys and coins, so you'll need more shade remains and pirate logs than you would think. So if you're doing the entire Shades of Morn collection log, you would need about 752 sacred oil. That's all for this guide, I hope this was helpful. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.